What's good, y'all? It's Bo Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 times WWE benefited from their bad booking uh, by Parts of Unknown, man. Uh, there's been a few times where, you know, a situation where the bad booking actually set up something greater in the future, you know, for that person. The most infamous one, the Yes Movement. The whole how that ended up starting with Daniel Bryan losing losing to Sheamus in like 18 seconds for I believe the World Heavyweight Championship and how that catapulted him to the yes movement just getting stronger to the point where people are like yo we want to see this guy win he deserves better that it's crazy them booking him like garbage made him become one of the most over people WWE has seen since damn near the Attitude Era the Daniel Bryan Yes movement still to this day is one of the most over movements that happened because of bad booking and people saying, screw this, we want to see this guy, Vince, at the top of the card. Beautiful thing to see. One of my favorite moments of all time when it came to just a wrestler getting over. But we're going to check this out. Appreciate all love and support. Let's do the damn thing, This man. indignation is typically defined as the reactive emotion of anger over perceived mistreatment, insult, or malice of another. This is a feeling many wrestling fans have been made to feel over the years because For of the sure. continued incompetence of WWE, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I need that feeling, that outlet for my rage. <laughs> yes, therapy would be more constructive, thank you for asking, but this is why it is so annoying when WWE manages to benefit from their own incompetence. Mm -hmm. I need my rage outlet, damn it! I can't go back to playing Overwatch, I can't go back! F Widowmaker bullshit. Anyway, what was I saying? WWE from time to time would luck into a fantastic moment or swelling of fan support for one wrestler or a group in particular because seeing WWE fumble the booking bag with Daniel Bryan one more time was simply the last straw. Mm -hmm. Well, here we will look at when WWE got bailed out when they didn't deserve to be. I'm the righteously indignant Tempest hailing from parts <laughs> unknown, and these are 10 times WWE benefited from their bad booking. But before we get on with our list, make sure, of course, that you like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications so you never miss a fun wrestling list just like this. Please subscribe. Please, sir. Can we have some more nope. subscribers, <laughs> sir? Number 10, Damien Mizdow. Do you remember mm. Damien Mizdow? The guy that was Mr. Wow. Money in the Bank a year earlier and was one of the great intellectual heels of the PG era? Well, WWE sure pulled the plug on his ascent hard when they fed him and the contract to John Cena on an episode of Raw in remember 2013. That. From there, things wouldn't pick up for old Damien until it appeared to hit rock bottom for him in 2014. Not literally, of course. That would be on the January 11th, 2013 SmackDown. But at the end of 2014, Damien Sandow was paired with The Miz as his stunt devil. This damning idea that saw Damien play second fiddle to The Miz wasn't exactly where people would have thought he would be a year out from cashing in the Money in the Bank briefcase, but hot dog if the newly dubbed Damien Mizdow didn't put 110% effort into this ridiculous mm -hmm. gimmick. He would mimic Miz's every yeah, move remember. while wrestling and got so much more over with the audience than he had ever been previously. There's no way the people in charge could have thought this gimmick would have worked as well as it it's did as evidence by their chance to double down the on it after WrestleMania 31 with Miz Dow wrestling Miz for the right to be called The Miz. He should have won! He'd have been such a better Miz than The Miz. But he didn't, and he was released a year later. That run he had, however, Bro, while look it at lasted. That. <laughs> he got the fake championship belt. Oh my God, that shit was great. He turned a horrible situation into something hilarious. Oh my God. Hilarious. Number nine, the Montreal screw job. On one hand, you could argue mm -hmm. that purely in a kayfabe sense, booking Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart for Survivor Series 1997 was a fine idea. That sure seemed like the direction to go after SummerSlam, but then you remember that this kayfabe business exists in a very not kayfabe world, and then you realize that this was very bad booking indeed. I won't bore you with the details of the Montreal Screwjob. Yeah. If you haven't heard of it, what are you doing here? But the long-term benefits of this famous bit of wrestling backstabbing truly are incalculable. Born out of this bit of nonsense was the Mr. McMahon character, the perfect antagonist to the emerging top babyface Steve Austin. Without this development, it is difficult to say whether the WWF would have beaten WCW in the Monday Night War at all. The Austin McMahon rivalry remains one of the most important rivalries in WWE history, Fast. and it wouldn't have happened without that night in Montreal making Vince McMahon the most hated villain in wrestling. Yep. Number eight, 
the heist of the century. Very good point. This sure is a weird one because this simply is a case of WWE booking themselves into a corner and then at the last minute deciding, fine, we'll do something else. Yeah. Leading into WrestleMania 31. Because it was all but certain that Roman Reigns was going to be Brock Lesnar. Nobody wanted it. And they pulled out an audible that saved the goddamn show. It saved them. It's the best, one of the best audibles they've ever pulled. Having Seth Rollins cash in at WrestleMania and winning, chef's kiss. Whoever came up with that, I don't know if it was Vince. You guys know whoever came up with that booking decision. They deserve all the accolades and praise. And Roman Reigns was the least over Mania main eventer in history to that point. And yeah. isn't that a funny thing to say today? Yeah. The fans almost unanimously did not want to see the future Tribal Chief be the one to defeat Brock Lesnar to win the WWE Championship, but WWE's own stubbornness took them to Mania with that plan. Until the week of the show, the word was Brock Lesnar was leaving WWE to make yeah. another run at a UFC comeback, so keeping the belt on him seemed unlikely. Then Brock announced that he was staying, so all of a sudden there was hope that he could retain the title. Unfortunately for fans, Brock had been champion since SummerSlam, and a part-time champion wasn't a permanent plan at that time. And isn't that a funny thing to say yeah, today? Yeah, it's so WWE's funny. WWE's final answer to get them out of this particularly circle. poorly booked WrestleMania main event was leaving fans with one of the best WrestleMania moments of all time, with Seth Rollins cashing in his Money in the Bank contract and stealing the title out from under Brock and Roman in so the great. heist of the century. So great. Number seven, The Undertaker's early streak matches. The Undertaker's mm. WrestleMania streak is one of the most legendary and prolific creations in WWE history, but damned are WWE if they try to tell you that this was always the plan. It wasn't. I sure won't listen to that nonsense when there's a DQ win in there. But while the streak as a whole can be looked at as one of the greatest long-term creations WWE ever had, there are certainly a number of questionable steps taken along the way when isolated. Giant Gonzalez losing by DQ to set up a big blow-off match at SummerSlam doesn't really make much sense when you think about it. Mm -hmm. The Undertaker beating Triple H at WrestleMania X7 when Triple H had just beaten number one contender and soon to be WWF champion Steve Austin a month earlier doesn't really make much sense when you think about it. Mm -hmm. But these things are absolutely justifiable when looked at in a broader context because these wins at WrestleMania gave WWE its biggest selling point for each WrestleMania for nearly a decade with yep. the creation of the streak. Yep. And in the grand scheme of things, did we really need to see another Triple H win at WrestleMania or have Giant Gonzalez have his hand raised in victory? No, we did no. not. <laughs> Number six, New Day's terrible babyface run. All right, now we're getting into the sh WWE is quick to name the New Day as one of the greatest factions in history now, but they sure weren't as quick to show you highlights of the group's first six months. That's because there were no highlights from their first six months. The New Day were a horribly bland babyface act out the gate, with yep. their power of positivity shtick not at all resonating with people who had been watching Kofi- I remember when they put them together, I was like, bro, this get this shit off my screen. It wasn't until the hate they were getting that they fed into it and became heels and that's when shit started getting better for them be kingston and biggie be generic baby faces for so long the power of the WWE fans' negativity reached its crescendo at wrestlemania 31 where fans continued to chant new day they sucks suck. new Day they sucks. Suck. Yep. Finally prompting WWE to allow the group to turn heel, which catapulted them to the success they were destined to achieve. The New Day's heel run consisted of them telling fans to be positive, only to be booed, which only then churned Xavier Woods into a fit of very not positive rage. Yep. By the time they arrived at SummerSlam 2015, they were the most popular act on the show as a result of their impeccable character work, only made possible by a horrendous babyface run to start. Yep. Number five. Rocky Maivia's terrible babyface run. The same story <laughs> yep. as the New Day, but on a much larger this, scale, Rocky Maivia here. did not resonate with the WWF fans Ooh. when he arrived on the scene in 1996. He was a smiling, white meat, mom and pop, apple pie babyface, ready to give it 110% and prove why he's the Intercontinental Champion. And when you have badass Steve Austin quickly becoming the most popular star wrestling had ever seen on the same show, yeah, it doesn't take much brain power to figure out why the fans started to chant, Rocky sucks. This was the late 90s and not the world that could be engrossed by this type of character. But where WWE benefited from their poor attempt at booking a future babyface star is when they finally released the shackles from young Rocky Man, and so allowed great. him to become The Rock, yeah. the most charismatic talker they have ever had and one of the best heel promos in WWE history. I don't need you to give a history lesson on The Rock. You all know who he is and don't you lie to me because I have proof. 
This might be the <laughs> biggest case of WWE's benefit from their own failure because honestly, how much more can you benefit than ending up with The Rock? Yeah. Number four. Once they turned him heel, it was over. And we got The Rock we got today. Well, you know, back then, you know, he needed that. He needed that transformation because without that, we we probably don't have one of the best rivalries ever in wrestling. The Rock and Stone Cold. Both of these guys, badasses. Love it, man. It's just crazy how things work out. And, of course, this next one, Becky Lynch turning heel. Oh, bro. Becky Lynch turns heel. God, this whole saga feels like it was yesterday and mm -hmm. also a million years ago. Becky Lynch was a popular babyface star on SmackDown in 2018 who did what a good contender should do and worked her way up the ranks by beating the rest of the roster until she had earned a title match at SummerSlam. Of course, it was only then that Charlotte Flair was unfairly added to her title match boy, does that ever sound familiar, huh. and steal the pin away from her to win the title. Now, if I didn't know better, that sure would sound like Becky was being wronged and thus was the hero of this story, but not in WWE. WWE instead tried to portray Charlotte as the hero, while yep. Becky turned sour, attacking not only Charlotte after the match, but the fans verbally on the following SmackDown. She and said it was the fans crazy because when she beat the crap out of Charlotte, everyone said yes! I was like, yes! There we go. And we understand. And they tried to really, really push this. Oh, you're a heel. She tried to heal it up. It didn't work. We we were we were we were there for it at that point, Becky. Fans <laughs> never supported her, which was categorically not true. true yeah. And was so not true, in fact, that the fans forced WWE's hand to make Becky Lynch a no-nonsense badass champion of the people. Facts. WWE was very resistant to this, and this wasn't a change made overnight, but they did end up with one of their most organically popular stars in quite some time out of it, and it stands to reason that Becky would not have been this popular at this level had the fans not had to fight for her to be their champion facts number three wwe can't book bray wyatt yeah, but holy sh which time do you want to talk about <laughs> bray wyatt has had a difficult go of things over the years thanks to his character requiring a bit more brain power to book than your average wrestling character mm -hmm. just about everything after he lost to john cena at wrestlemania 30 was pretty pants whether it be his constant ramblings about buzzards the projected maggots the dirty refrigerator sister abigail it was all just so bad but thankfully, we live in a world where Bray Wyatt is a creative genius, and had we not been forced to sit through those years upon years of bad booking of Bray, we wouldn't have been gifted the Firefly Funhouse, nope. a deconstruction of Wyatt's years of misuse by the company and the most interesting work he had done since his days as a cult leader. Unfortunately, the bad booking doesn't stop there, as WWE felt the need to treat their fans the way a kid treats a whack-a-mole, feeding the fiend to Goldberg in 2020, but again, at the very least, this absolute creative booking blunder freed Wyatt up to do the Firefly Funhouse match at WrestleMania which 36. Is, which was pretty Even good. Even when WWE tries their hardest to ruin Wyatt's day, he always found a way to come back. Which is Number insane. Two, Sheamus beats Daniel Bryan in 18 seconds. I w said it at the beginning. Once they did that, Vince thought it was over for him. Like, he thought it was like, ah, uh, it is what it is. Once they did that, I don't think Vince knew what he had created once that happened. WWE thought they were being real funny at WrestleMania 28, this show being attended by many of the most hardcore wrestling fans in the world and watched by over a million more at home, mm -hmm. fans that had paid their money to see the matches that had been advertised, including but not limited to Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus for the World Heavyweight Championship a match WWE decided fans just weren't going to get a chance to see on this night as they had Sheamus beat Brian in 18 seconds as the Super Mario Sunshine Game Over music played over top of it. In one way, WWE greatly did not benefit from this as Sheamus never got off the ground as world champion because of this booking fiasco yep. as so many fans held Brian in such high regard. Where the benefit did come, however, is in the groundswell of support for Daniel Bryan himself. Brian had been enjoying a stellar reign as World Heavyweight Champion prior to Mania, but this support made it impossible for Brian to slip back down the card. Yep. If it wasn't over before, this whole incident made the yes chant the phenomenon it became. Yep. Whether it was his fantastic feud with CM Punk, his team with future mayor f Head Kane, or his <laughs> WWE title match with John Cena at SummerSlam, a decisive oh, WrestleMania loss made <laughs> mayor the best F thing to happen to Brian. <laughs> That is until... Number one, Batista wins the 2014 Royal Rumble. Yep. Those in WWE will try to Ooh. tell you that the main event of WrestleMania 30 was a brilliantly told story. I, I like how the top two spots were Daniel Bryan in his ascension to the main event at WrestleMania 30, bro. 
It all played in the part. That was long-term booking that was not intended. If you guys remember, they even tried to kill the Yes movement by having Daniel Bryan turn heel and join the Wyatt family. It didn't work. I don't care what nobody say. They were trying to kill that that momentum. I don't. I don't want. Some people are like, oh, that was part of the whole booking plan for him to turn on Bray. No, it wasn't. It just they couldn't. They couldn't get the fans to hate him. They knew the fans. We we knew what we wanted, and we wanted him to be the guy. We wanted him to main event WrestleMania, and we wanted him to win the championship, which he did. It wasn't because. Vince booked it. It was because the fans weren't going to take no for an answer. And it was a beautiful thing to see. Executed to perfection by the uber-talented creative minds of those at the top. Of course, anyone who lived through the Yes movement knows that this is not the case. In the real world, WWE had no interest in paying off the Daniel Bryan versus The Authority storyline. No. Nope. Maybe ever. They wanted Bryan to wrestle Sheamus at WrestleMania. Again. And knowing them, they probably would have pulled the rug out from under them for a third time. But no, once Batista won the Royal Rumble. Oh, and of course, CM Punk leaving, that also kind of helped out things as well. 14, the fans made it their mission to campaign for Brian to compete at WrestleMania in nothing less than the main event. It is incomprehensible to me that WWE didn't plan to pay off Brian's story, but their booking incompetence made for a legitimate fan-driven storyline that yep. made for an even more cathartic moment when Brian finally did win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. It wasn't on purpose, but WWE's bad booking made for one of the best moments in their history. So really, who can be righteously indignant about that? And that's our list. Make sure of If y'all know me, y'all know WrestleMania 30 is one of my favorite WrestleManias of all time. And yeah. What else is there to say? Them not taking Daniel Bryan serious and the Yes movement being created out of his mistreatment of losing that championship in 18 seconds at a WrestleMania. It just it catapulted him. Him not not even winning the Royal Rumble that year, having Batista come out there and be the guy. Oh, bro. Oh, bro. Oh, this was it. It it, it was it was just it kept crescendoing. It just kept getting higher and higher to the point. It was like you know what we got to give him the titles. It 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 only makes sense, you know. So. But yeah, comment down below. Let me know which, uh, which times or matches can you remember or just feud where WWE, they just, you knew they were screwing over an individual. They didn't really care about them, but it ultimately made people want to see this person more and they ended up becoming even more over because WWE and Vince McMahon's booking was trying to bury them. What are those few times, if you can remember, of a wrestler overcoming the bad booking from Vince McMahon and uh, what they were doing back then? But comment down below. Let me know that. I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.